the key message of our upcoming paper on diet and fertility is that making the right dietary choices and also including the right amount of physical activity in your daily life can make a large difference in your probability of becoming fertile. Uh, our primary outcome in this analysis that we've looked at has been fertility due to anovulation, really failure of the, of the ovary to ovulate and produce a viable egg. And uh, of course, other kinds of fertility, and there are other kinds of fertility, are probably not going to be so affected by diet. For example, uh, blocked tubes that may have been the result of an infection in the past. Uh, no amount of dietary manipulation is likely to open up those black tubes. Uh, there are some other kinds of fertility, though, uh, due to endometriosis, for example, that may well be affected by diet. Uh, so our focus here was on failure to ovulate, uh, but there are some other aspects of fertility that are probably going to be partly diet-related also. So we've, we've identified several factors that uh, are related to lower chance of uh, infertility due to ovulation disorders. Uh, I think the most important of them are the ones that are also proven to have, also proven to have other beneficial effects on, on pregnancy outcomes. So most importantly, uh, taking folic acid containing multivitamins, uh, which uh, we found to be associated with the lower chance of infertility, but has also been uh, known for a long time to prevent uh, neural tube defects, so uh, congenital defects of the central nervous system and, all, and potentially other congenital defects. And the other one is uh, achieving a healthy weight, which has been shown by many different groups uh, to uh, uh, affect fertility beneficially and is also known to reduce the chances of uh, uh, experiencing some pregnancy-related complications like uh, gestational diabetes or preeclampsia. Uh, on top of that, we've also found some more novel dietary factors that uh, we that we found to be related to a lower chance of infertility. And uh, I, I think choosing between those uh, should be pretty much up to what we feel comfortable. Uh, or not in making changes to their diet. So, for example, uh, one is avoiding trans fats, uh, which have been known for a while to uh, affect uh, heart disease risk in, in both men and women and may also be associated with diabetes, um, both gestational and uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, so there really isn't any good reason to be consuming trans fats, so those can be taken off the diet. Uh, Others are choosing low glycemic carbohydrates, uh, such as uh, pasta, whole grain, and whole grains, as opposed to uh, white bread and uh, white uh, white rice, uh, because they have uh, an effect on blood glucose and on insulin uh, levels in the body that uh, make it easier for women to have normal ovulation and become pregnant. Another factor that we've identified is that uh, women who consume protein primarily from vegetable sources uh, have higher chance of uh, getting pregnant than women who consume uh, sources uh, uh, meat from primarily animal sources, especially uh, red meats and, and chicken. Uh, with uh, fish and eggs having no apparent uh, detrimental effect. So, on top of uh, so, I, ideally, you would be. Uh, you should be able to switch gradually from animal sources of protein to vegetable sources of protein, and uh, we have found that to have a very strong effect on on uh, fertility in women. We also found that uh, high fat dairy products were associated with a lower risk of infertility due to ovulation disorders, whereas uh, low fat dairy products um, had the exact opposite effect. What we see is really a whole lifestyle package. And if we follow these good nutritional choices, perhaps just being a little bit temporary about the higher fat milk, but otherwise this whole package will help someone have a healthy pregnancy and help the woman herself stay healthy throughout the years.